Uh, my sister Tracy is visiting us here up at the Connecticut house and we're making some kind of bread. Honey whole wheat. A honey whole wheat bread and we're going to put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. Well, it's rapid rise and then you put it in the refrigerator. So if you don't have time to make bread, you actually do have time to make bread. That's the point. And she's the bread expert. So um, here we go. All right. There's warm water here. Yep. Ooh, rapid rise yeast that I cut on the wrong side. Okay. But it has to be the rapid rise yeah. yeast. Yeah. Not just active yeast. Right. All right, that should be fine. Hang out. So That's is it good. okay there's some there's some clumps in there? Is that okay? Oh yeah, that'll be fine. Watch it, because it'll start puffing up and growing already. See? Where's the milk? We oh, forgot it. I forgot to get it out of the refrigerator. Who's this sound like? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually a little bit over three quarters there, but it's garden fork, so I'll be all right. There's the milk right next to the bowl. Oh. <laughs> So we put the milk in the microwave for a minute? Yep. If you don't want to drink it, then it's definitely way too hot. If it's too hot to drink, then the milk is too hot. Yeah, you need it about 110 to 120. This is another bowl this is going in. Mm. This is a... Uh, French or... Chestnut. Honey. Chestnut. Oh, cool. Only two tablespoons, even though it's honey wheat bread. I wonder about that, but... Any kind of sugar, any sweet stuff you have in a bread recipe is food for the yeast. So we don't want to overfeed our yeast with our honey. What I should have done is measure the oil first because then the measuring tool would be all nice and slippery and the honey would just slide right out of it so instead the, of stick in there. If this has a slick of oil on it, if it has some vegetable oil on it, mm -hmm. on the spoon, right. then when you do, do the honey, it'll come right off. Yeah, instead of having honey stuck in your tablespoon measure. I have a spatula, you know, you got me one. Salt in bread inhibits the growth of yeast, and you never... I was just going to ask that, actually, because yeah. on, on the greenhouse side, for my no-need bread variation, I have like a tablespoon of salt, and one of the members left a comment that said, too much salt will kill the rise. Right. So. Yeah. So the honey will make it get really excited and grow really fast, but the salt will balance it out and keep it in check. All right, so we're mixing. Mix, mix, mix. Yep. Well, that's pretty simple. Okay, I missed that, but you just added the yeast? Uh-huh, the yeast and the water it was in into the other liquid ingredients that were all mixed okay. up. So... One and a half cups of flour. <gasps> Very nice! This is from the Brooklyn Kitchen, which is this really cool store they got. They got written up in the New York Times the other day. Um, very nice people. And... Uh, so this is a, is this called a dough scraper or a yep. pastry scraper? You bet. But you can scrape, Hi, puppy. you can scrape the ball with it. It's midgy. It is midgy. Hi, midgy. So when your arm is tired, you're close to getting neat, the kneading part. Yep. And now you're going to add the whole wheat flour. Yeah, this um, is a pretty simple recipe. It's two cups whole wheat. That's pretty dangerous measuring over the bowl. Um, and two cups white. Well, the gluten is forming and the flour is absorbing the liquid, so it's turning into a big doughy mass that will soon have to be turned out onto a board and kneaded. Do you like bread? <laughs> yes, sir, I like bread. <laughs> I don't like anything. <laughs> okay, I'm up to a half cup of whole wheat. I'm gonna put in almost a whole nother half cup so I can get this out of the bowl. Because it's, it's too gooey right now, so you wanna add more flour. Right. So it'll like ball up. Yep. All right. So this is a. You, so you scrape this out, and it goes onto the board. Yep. So you're turning the. You put dough down. You put flour down, and then you're turning the flour into yep. the dough. Yeah. This is pretty wet. So a scraper like this is really handy then. Oh gosh, yeah. You use this for everything. So this is flour from the, you have to add this in that's called for in the recipe. Yes, I'm still not up to my whole two cups of whole wheat. So oh, there we go. So to, to get the final yeah, measurements, you, mm -hmm. you work it in. We're gonna we're gonna knead it in basically. Yep. Ooh, nice. So could you do a slow motion knead to show us how to do it? Oh my God, I don't know if I can do this in slow motion. Okay, here's my bread. All right. I take both hands. I push down, pull forward, push down. So you're pulling the pull front. Pull forward. You're pulling the front to the back again, is really what you're doing. Yep. Does it push really matter? So your fingers grab pull the back. Pull forward. And yep. And then I flip. So it's in a hot dog shape, and then you move it there into and a I ball go one, shape. Two, 
free. If you had a rough day at work, you just let your bread have it a little bit. So there's more flour on the board now. And then we're going to take this and I'm going to go with my, with yeah. this, I'm going to push forward. And then with my fingers, I'm going to pull this back like that. Yeah. And then push forward again and back like that. So I do this three times. Yeah, I do. And then I flip. And then you turn it 90 degrees mm -hmm. and you, you kind of fold it over, fold it over on itself again. Yep. And okay. then you, there you go. push this out. Eric, you feel better? Oh, yeah, I feel much calmer. <laughs> it's stressful having my sister around. You're not pounding it as much as she was. Ooh, hi, hen. So when do you know it's done being kneaded? Uh, that's a really hard question. Um, if you're new to kneading, I would run a timer. Oh, because it'll say knead for 10 minutes or something? Yeah, and it'll feel like an eternity when you start. You go, eight minutes. I can't do this for eight minutes. You can. You really can. So I can, this stuff that's sticking, I can take my scraper. Yes, as long as it's not too dry. Yeah, we're okay. If it feels like Play-Doh or clay, you're okay. okay. So we, it, now we shape it into a ball, like a small, big soft ball. Hey, little baby. Okay, time to rest. 10 minute rest. And right. now we wait 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes is over. And we have our clean, nice towel. Whoa, Ooh, look at that, very nice. Ta-da! It looks the same, so don't worry if it doesn't look different. <laughs> it wasn't transforming itself under there. Hey, baby. So it's not going to be substantially larger or anything. No, you were things are happening, but we just can't see them. So with rapid rise yeast, the first rising is cut down to a 10 minute rest cycle. And our second rising is going to be in the refrigerator overnight because okay, we have so a busy day. And I'm just going to shape a basic loaf for a nine by five pan and that we've a, already greased. That's a greased pan. You can, we use butter, but you can use vegetable shortening. Yeah, I prefer Crisco, but. All right, so we got a rolling pin. Yeah, we're just going to make a bit of a rectangle and it's going to slide around. Um, the bread is very, springy at this point. Yeah, it looks springy. The instructions are going to tell you to have something like um, roll it out to an mm, like a 8 by 14 or 8 by 12. You know, it's dough. It doesn't go into rectangles. It goes into ovals. And you roll it up, if you can, kind of tightly. So it's kind of like rolling up a roll of, a thing of carpet. Yep, that's all. Keep rolling and you have a seam. Right. Okay, you have to pinch that closed. So you're making the wet part of the dough, if there's any part that's still a little moist, grab onto each other. There we go. So you've turned it up, so you've turned it so the seam is down now. What a cutie. Yeah, and this dough is sturdy. You take that and pop them in. <gasps> Look at that. Nice. We put a little bit of oil on it. You just brush it on the bread. So it's just a vegetable oil. A vegetable oil so that when it's in the refrigerator, it does not dry out and form a skin on top of the loaf, which would then really not be very pleasant to chew into and bite on. Okay, so we're gonna oil the top of it and put it in the fridge. Cover it with saran wrap, put it in the fridge for two to 24 hours. Bye, little guy. Oh, boy, that was good for it. <laughs> <laughs> We set it for 375 or 35 minutes. That's it, just 35 minutes. And breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it sounds done. You took this out of the oven and it looks great. So what are you gonna do now? Okay, this is tricky. Um, you have to get, if you can, Pop the bread out of the pan, woohoo, without oh. burning yourself. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. Bread should sound hollow. Okay, so um, 
after doing some work in the couch, you see what my life is like here. Um, we, uh, we went up to the camp last night and we had dinner and Tracy brought her bread and it went over really well, but we realized we forgot to have a tasting. You can't slice your bread too quickly. You need to wait 20 to 30 minutes after taking it out of the oven before you slice bread. Siblings chewing. <laughs> it's really good. It is. Tracy, can you say it tastes amazing? Tastes amazing. 